everyone welcome back to my channel uh or welcome if you're new so today's video is all about my tv um i get a ton of questions about my tv like online um but also in person as well anytime anyone sees it um i guess because you just don't see it very much anymore <laughs> um but my tv uh is the like only tv that i have in my living room like sometimes people want to know um if it works and stuff because it's the only one that they see there and the, the answer to that is yes it does work so my tv is from the 1970s um i found it online like on facebook marketplace about four years ago and it is from the original owners so they said that they bought it in like 1977 or 78 i haven't like verified that information so like I, i've never looked at the model number or anything so it's possible it's not but um from those years is what i meant to say <laughs> anyway i love it it works um the owners they had not been using it i think for 20 years um at the point that we got it um but they were just using it as like a tv stand for their modern tv um but the tv still worked I had been looking for one for a few months and um, I had seen a couple online that were like for, for sale um, but I hadn't you know made any uh, like moves on getting one and then I just happened to see that this one was up there for free and so we messaged about it right away and um, it's funny because the people who were trying to give it away for free, they actually um, were going to just throw it away the next day. Cause I guess they had had it up for maybe like a week or so and no one had showed any interest. So they, um, the woman had actually um, had like a sign on the TV saying like free still works. And they were gonna, you know, put it outside by the road, hoping that somebody might um, like, you know, see that it worked and want to take it. Anyway, <laughs> most of the like vintage tours that I watch, people always have like a modern TV in their living room or sometimes people modify the TVs by like putting a modern TV inside of the um, case, I guess you call it, um, which uh, is a good idea, but I really, really, really wanted an actual vintage TV that worked so that I could use it. Um, and not have to do anything to it. So, had it for four years. The TV works perfect, which um, I'm still pretty shocked about it. The sound quality is amazing, and so is the picture quality. So there's no discoloration whatsoever. Like I've had tube TVs in the past that, you know, over, over the years, things start to look, um, sometimes like it'll turn like a hue of green where everything starts to have that greenish look. Or I think we had one that kind of went purplish looking. And a lot of times with um, older tube TVs as well, they have like a, a sound, um, I want to say clicking, but that's not really what I mean. Um, almost like a snapping sound they can kind of develop none of that so very 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 grateful to have found this tv <laughs> it's probably like my best find ever and the fact that it was free is just amazing but basically i've turned my tv into a smart tv which i am now like it took a while to get to this point um so i thought i would just go through like how i did that so i do also just want to put a disclaimer here because i feel like this video might potentially reach outside of like my audience and um I feel like this is the kind of video that can get people really riled up in the comment section about I feel like anything to do with like electronics or technology or like home improvement stuff people always get really riled up in the comments with like telling somebody they're doing something wrong or that there's a better way look <laughs> I do not really, like, I'm not a tech person. I don't really know, like, what I'm talking about um, in that sense. <laughs> I, I figured it out and what I'm doing is working, but it is entirely possible that what I'm doing, like, I've overcomplicated it or 
there was an easier way maybe um, I don't know I could not find very much information about this at all when I was trying to figure this out for myself um, and I even went to like an electronic store you know where they have sales associates where they're um, they know what they're talking about or they're supposed to know what they're talking about I don't know sometimes like I think that maybe they don't really know what they're talking about and they're just kind of bluffing their way through it but um, there's a very um, very nice young man working but he was of no help <laughs> to me at all and um, I just think he couldn't really grasp what I was trying to figure out and he was probably in his early 20s so you know I was explaining that I had a floor model TV and like he kept referencing I'll just maybe throw a photo in <laughs> in in maybe probably the late 90s early 2000s these floor model TVs were like really popular I think maybe these were like the first kind of flat screen TVs that came out I don't know so I just want to put that disclaimer in here like I don't know what I'm talking about this isn't meant to be like a tutorial but I did just want to share um how I managed to do this and I think it works great I'm super super happy with it the, I would say 90% of what I watch on TV is like TV shows from the 50s and 60s and I watch movies from like the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s. So all of that is kind of, you know, in the format of like more of the square TV. So it works out great. So those types of uh, like that type of show uh, is going to show up well on that type of TV. I use um, like Apple TV so I'm able to buy um, you know like old TV shows or old movies um, it most like I would probably say 90% of the time I can find what I'm looking for on there although there's definitely movies and shows that are not on there which makes me sad <laughs> but um, I do have a big collection of VHS but it is nice when I just can't find a VHS to be able to watch um, the old movies that I love like on that TV it's just uh, it brings me a lot of joy to watch those on that TV so anyway I'm gonna just get into the video but I did just want to say that little disclaimer um, yeah I know. just be nice <laughs> I'm sure that there are things I'm like and I'm not sure, like, I'm not 100% confident. Like, I had this huge wave of insecurity come over me right before I was going to film this, um, thinking, can I even talk about this and, like, say the right terms? I don't know. Anyway, I took a whole bunch of shots of the TV and all of my, like, whole setup, and I'm probably just going to record a voiceover over it, and I'm going to do my best to use the correct terms but there is a high possibility that I will not use correct terms potentially and also um, there is a possibility that I'm not understanding how it's actually working as well so I just want to put that out there um, and if you're watching this in the future like far from now when I'm filming this when I post it and the comments are off you'll know that shit probably went south in the comment section so anyway um, Thank you for watching and uh, stay tuned to uh, see how I made it work. Alright guys, so here it is. Here's my TV. Um, and as you can see, I have a like a stack of things on top of it. One side is just like a VHS um, holder, but the other side is all of the components I have going on. And I've kind of added to this like in stages over the years, so I definitely didn't have it um, set up as a smart TV like right away, but um, just recently I added that step. But um, the very top thing I have here is obviously just a clock, um, not having it like I couldn't tell the time on the TV until recently. So this is just an old clock that I got from my work. But I've just left it up there because I think it kind of adds to the, the vintage feel even though we don't even really need it anymore because you can tell the time on the smart TV. So the first thing that I got was the like DVD VHS combo player um, so that I could play like, you know, movies on DVD and or VHS. However, um, in order to do that, I needed to get uh, an additional component because the back of this TV 
literally has a power cord and a coaxial cable and that's it. Now in hindsight, I probably could have just plugged the coaxial cable in and the VHS would have worked, but um, the like DVD player would not have worked without AV cables. So. so I had to get what is called an RF converter, I believe. It might be an RF connector. I'm not sure. Um, and I think that the RF stands for radio frequency, but I'm not positive of that either. Anyway, um, I was working at a thrift store during this time, so I was lucky enough we had a huge section full of basically outdated electronics. I spent an afternoon digging through it and I found this and I thought, okay, I think this is what I would need um, to get it to work. So I took it home that day and it did work. So basically you're plugging in the coaxial cable from the TV into this and then plugging the AV cables from the back into the um, like VHS DVD combo. So then if I'm understanding this correctly, <laughs> the um, digital signal is getting input and convert it to an analog signal, which is allowing it to play through this TV. So that worked out great. I was able to buy a bunch of VHS from where I was working and get tons of old movies. I also was able to thrift quite a few um, TV shows on DVD, like old TV shows that I like from the 50s, 60s, 70s. Um, but I started to want to play. I have like a hard drive that is filled with a bunch of old TV shows and movies and um, TV specials, like things that you could find on YouTube and just download. So I started to think maybe there would be a way that I could plug in my hard drive somehow, and then I'd be able to play those things on that TV. So that is where the next piece comes into play. And this is something that I ordered from Amazon and I believe it's called a TV digital converter box. Um, I think that the main reason someone would get this is to because there's no like analog signals anymore you can't just use like an antenna so i think this sort of acts like an antenna but to pick up uh, digital signals not analog since there are none um anyway the main reason that i got it and i know that it does other things too like i'm pretty sure you can almost use it like a a tivo type situation where you can record tv I've never used it for any of that. I just use it simply for the USB um, port there. I can plug in my external hard drive and it will play the files. Um, it doesn't play every type of file, but it plays. A, there's a big list that comes with it of what it will play. So all I have to do is plug in the AV cables from the RF converter into this box and then it's all like good to go and I can just plug in my hard drive into the USB and um, then I can watch all of the things that I have on the hard drive, provided they're in the correct um, format. And so basically that's the setup that I used for a few years and it worked great and everything, but I just had this nagging feeling that somehow there had to be a way to connect um, like a streaming device. So we use Roku in other like areas of our home, like on other TVs. And um, so I already was familiar with like how that worked and I knew that it, I had needed like an HDMI. So I started looking online for like an HDMI to AV or vice versa, <laughs> you know, that basically I was hoping to find like a, a cord at first that maybe I could would be HDMI on one end that I could plug into the Roku and uh, that would be AV on the other side because then I could plug that into either the RF connector or the converter box and like hope that it would work um, but I couldn't find anything like that but then I did find this little box on Amazon um, and I'm not sure what it's called converter I guess but it is HDMI in audio video out I believe I'm saying that correctly because yeah the Roku is going into the 
converter and then into AV that's then going that is then going into the RF converter so I feel like this actually sounds way more complicated than it is or it seems like a lot but it's actually not once you get it set up but um so I ordered from Amazon it came like two days later and I set it up and it worked and I could not believe it because <laughs> I I wasn't 100% confident it was gonna work but I figured it was worth a try it was pretty inexpensive I think it was like $20 so um you know in the back of the all of this there is a lot of cords but um overall it's worth it so all we ever really need to do when we want to change between the roku and like dvd is just unplug some av cables which isn't really a big deal um so yeah by far the addition of being able to connect the roku has been like game changing in terms of like enjoyment level of the tv um because uh, you can just do so much with that um there's so many tv shows that are like i can stream now just it's just so much easier i guess and convenient to stream but also just having like apple tv and all of the like movies and stuff that i've already bought just being able to play them right through that tv it's just like super convenient um most old movies as well are like fairly inexpensive I can usually find a lot of them for like five dollars which if you found like a dvd or a vhs like in a thrift store you're probably gonna pay like probably at least two dollars so and it's just the convenience of just having the digital copy of it i live in canada so we have a lot of different like streaming things which is what you might have saw but um just on the roku channel itself which is free um they have a lot of old um like vintage shows like the adams family um, Bewitched, one of my all-time favorites. Um, I believe they have, like, the Doris Day show. Um, so, so many. I think even the Jack Benny shows on it. Um, just a ton of shows that I love watching, basically. Um, and I know they have, like, way more streaming type things. Like, if you live in the U.S., so you could probably get even more. But one of the, um streaming things that we do have that's just in Canada I believe is called River TV and it's really good because you just get tons of channels um so it's almost like having cable but it's only like $20 a month maybe not even um but they have a few um channels they have like a movie channel called Silver Screen Classics on there which um I just noticed that they're playing a Clint Eastwood movie called Hang 'em High it's like one of my favorite Clint Eastwood movies that's so weird that that just happened to be on when I was filming this um but they also have uh just added like a relatively recently added a new tv station that plays nothing but like old shows I believe or at least that's all I've seemed to see on it is old shows one of the shows that they play on there uh, pretty frequently is the Lucy show, which I love, which is one of her sitcoms she did after I Love Lucy. I think there was like two that were after that. I'm not sure if the Lucy show was like the first or the second, but um, yeah. So anyway, I realize it looks, um, the picture doesn't look very good when I'm filming it either, but that's just because when you're trying to film like analog, it just comes out that way. But Anyway, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully this helps somebody. And again, I apologize if I uh, said the wrong thing. I don't know. I tried, so hopefully it makes enough sense. I'll link all the stuff below as well. Um, I took this shot for any nerds out there uh, who might want to see that. And then I realized it said fabricated in in like d85 so i'm thinking maybe that means it was the year 1985 and those people were not accurate saying that it was like 77 or 78 but i'm not sure anyway thanks for watching and i'll see you again soon